Hello class, welcome to the second video of our third lesson of our historical fiction writing unit. That was a long sentence. Your first video went over the organization template that I want you to fill out before you begin drafting your story. This second video, I am going to read a book, a good book, a goofy book, but a good book nonetheless that shows a good view of the writer's process when you are writing a creative story. I figured it would be a good example for you before you write your story to show that I do not expect a story that is 250 pages long. Uh, and it also gives a really clear example of an author working through their story to make it a better story. Okay, so the main character is a chicken. That's right, a chicken. The book I'm reading today is called the Plot Chickens. Yes, The Plot Chickens by Mary Jane and Herm Ock. I think that's how you pronounce his name. I'm not sure. So, let us begin. The Plot Chickens. Henrietta loved to read. Soon she had read every book on the farm a dozen times, so she went to town to find more. When she spotted people carrying books out of the library, she went inside to wait in line. When it was Henrietta's turn, the librarian said, We have nothing for chickens here. Try the feed store. Frustrated, Henrietta clucked at the top of her lungs. Bop, bop, bop. Well, why didn't you say so? The librarian handed her three books. Henrietta was in reading ecstasy. Every day she read to her aunts, then returned the books to the library for more. And I apologize, I use the word ants. Some people use the term aunt, that pronunciation. I will be using the pronunciation of ant just because that's what I'm used to. One day, Henrietta said, Reading books is so much fun. Writing books must be exhilarating. She searched the shelves until she found a book about writing. The librarian was impressed. And of course, it's a book called Writing Rules by Read More. Hmm. When she got home, Henrietta read, Rule one, you need a main character. That's me, Aunt Golda. I'm the main hen here. Now the character should be interesting. That's me. No me. Aunt Golda won because she was the oldest. Henrietta found a typewriter and began to peck out a story. Once upon a time, there was a hen named Aunt Golda. Rule two, you need to hatch a plot. A plot of land? No, plot is what happens in the story. It starts with rule three, give your main character a problem. I don't want any problems, me neither. No way! Then I'll make up a character. Once upon a time, there was a hen named Maxine. Rule four, develop your plot by asking, what if? What if Maxine goes into the woods alone? Her mother should tell her that's dangerous. Maxine went walking alone in the woods, even though her mother told her it was dangerous. Something bad will happen. A wolf might be following her. Suddenly, Maxine saw a wolf following her down the path. Then the wolf catches Maxine. The end. Good story. Maxine can't be caught. She must save herself. What if she shoots the wolf with a cyberspace ray gun? The wolf is toast. The end. Good story. That's silly. Hens don't have guns. Rule five, write what you know. What if she hides? We hide from hawks every day. Maxine hid under a bush. Then the wolf gets bored and leaves. The end. Good story. You can't leave yet. Rule six, build suspense. Build a fence. 
Suspense to make the reader worry. The wolf sniffed. I smell a delicious young hen nearby. He started creeping toward Maxine's hiding place. Then he eats her. The end. Good story. Not yet. Rule seven. Make your story come alive by using all five senses. Maxine heard the wolf growl. As he came closer, she, ha she saw his sharp teeth and smelled his wolfy body odor. When he was nearer still, she felt the heat of his icky breath. When he stuck his head through the leaves, Maxine tasted the bile rising from her gizzard. Then Maxine dies of fright. The end. Good story. That is not the end. Endings are the hardest part. Maxine's mother swoops in to save her in the nick of time. No. Rule eight. The main character must solve his or her problem. Maxine gathered her courage. Then she plunged her sharp beak into the tip of the wolf's tender nose. The wolf howled in pain and ran off, never to be seen again. The end. Good story. It's not a good story. It's a great story. Now I'll revise it until it's perfect, then send it to the publisher. Hmm, revise. Dear publisher, I am sending you The Perils of Maxine, a book about a chicken. I am well qualified to write this story because I am a chicken. I know how a chicken thinks and feels and what a chicken likes to read. Excitedly yours, Henrietta. Many, many months later, the publisher sent a rejection letter, a letter, a rejection letter. Dear Mrs. Henrietta, we do not publish books written by chickens. Even if, even if we did, we wouldn't want this one. We didn't like it. Don't quit your day job. Have a nice life. Hunter Fox, editor. Hmm, sounds like not a chicken editor. The ants were devastated, but Henrietta vowed not to brood over her rejection. I'll make my own books. Here she is publishing her book on a book press, not a cider press anymore. Let's see how making her own books goes for her. Yellow. Yellow plus magenta. Yellow plus magenta plus cyan. Yellow magenta cyan plus black. Here she is making her own illustrations. When her books were finished, Henrietta gave one to the librarian. Your book should be reviewed, the librarian said. Send it to the corn book. So Henrietta mailed it off. When the corn book review came out, it said, Henrietta, The Perils of Maxine, one, do one dozen pages, Cider Press. Henrietta lays an egg with her first book. We hope this is her last book. The Perils of Maxine shows why chickens shouldn't ever write it is odiferous by noah like hmm odiferous means it stinks end of story poor henrietta i'm going to keep writing henrietta said but her feelings were hurt and a little voice inside her kept saying chicken shouldn't ever write Chicken shouldn't ever write. Henrietta's heart wasn't into writing anymore. She even stopped going to the library. But her aunts missed hearing Henrietta read, so they begged her until she went to get some books. Henrietta was embarrassed. Had the librarian seen that awful review? The children love your book. Will you read them? The Perils of Maxine by Henrietta, voted best book of the year by Our Story, Our Children. When Henrietta went into the story room, the children cheered. She read with dramatic expression. Bark! 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 Of course, all the children heard was, Bark! 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 
but it didn't matter. They knew the story by heart. So, here at the end of this book is Henrietta's story. Part of the reason I wanted to share this story was to show you an actually pretty good length of a story. Some of you I know that I've talked to have gotten a little nervous about the length, the required length of this assignment. Please don't worry about the length of your story. Of course, I don't want it to be so short that I can tell that you didn't put much effort into it. But let me read this story as an example of what I may be looking for. Of course, since we're writing historical fiction, I really don't want you writing about the life of a chicken, okay? Unless that chicken happens to live during the Industrial Revolution. But I digress. Let me read, let me read the perils of Maxine, okay? Once upon a time, there was a hen named Maxine. Maxine went walking alone in the woods, even though her mother told her it was dangerous. Suddenly, Maxine saw a wolf following her down the path. Maxine hid under a bush. The wolf sniffed. I smell a delicious young hen nearby. He started creeping toward Maxine's hiding place. Maxine heard the wolf growl. As he came closer, she saw his sharp teeth and smelled his wolfy body odor. When he was nearer still, she felt the heat of his icky breath. <coughs> when he stuck his head through the leaves, Maxine tasted the bile rising from her gizzard. Maxine gathered her courage. Then she plunged her sharp beak into the tip of the wolf's tender nose. The wolf howled in pain and ran off, never to be seen again. The end. All right. Hopefully that the reading of this book has helped you out a little bit. It gives you a good idea of the writer's workshop process. It gives you a good idea of how you may approach writing a story, particularly a creative story. Um, it also gives you a good idea of what I'm looking for in terms of not being tremendously complex with your first historical fiction story, but just making sure that you have solid main character, um, a good plot, and the character trying to solve a problem. Okay? All right. Well, make sure that you do get that organization template filled out today so you can be ready for drafting tomorrow. Make a great template.